Today's guest is Andrew Brown. He's the co-founder and CEO of ToolFetch.com. Andrew, thank you, thank you for uh, coming on the show. It's good to be here, and it's good to actually uh, to meet you virtually. Yeah, absolutely. Like when when you're interacting online and stuff like that, uh, you know, this is the next step, right? One one day we'll we'll meet in uh, person, right, face to face. Oh, oh, for sure, for sure. <laughs> So, you know, before I do these episodes, I always try to do my homework as, as much as I can. And, um, you know, I'm looking at your various bios and stuff. And, and you know, I know you're not that active on TikTok, but I saw sort of three sentences and I wanted to sort of hone in on them. So there were one line says, being an entrepreneur, all about the hustle, born to entertain. Tell me about that. Yeah. Um, so I've been entertaining. Uh, on video for the last, I would say about three and a half, four years. And that kind of started uh, back uh, doing some infomercials for my business, which were a tool and equipment business. And it kind of evolved over time uh, into more content uh, for LinkedIn for uh, skill trades and, and blue collar workers, men and women. Um, you know, I consistently put out messages about uh, the skilled trades and the, um, you know, uh, just, just you know, about uh, the trades and that there's a lack of skilled workers and we need to stand behind them. So it's it sort of evolved over time. But I am active actually on TikTok. So I actually do uh, post uh, videos that I have posted on LinkedIn. I also post on TikTok as well. Yeah, no, that's that, that's very good. Now, um, you've been an entrepreneur for twenty plus years. Is is that correct? That's right. That's right. I started my business when I was about twenty three years old. Yeah, that's 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 roughly the age that I started my first business. Tell me how that happened. Yeah, so I have a particular date uh, that's that's in my mind, and that's September eleventh, two thousand one. And I'm living in New York City at the time. I'm 23 years old, and the planes had just hit the building. And I had this like overall sense that I needed to help. I needed to get down there somehow. How do I get down there? My friend and I had this crazy idea that we're going to go down there and help. So I called him up, and he lives in Rhode Island, and he made the trek into the city, picked me up in this big blue van with this big American flag in the back. He had overalls and hard hats that we put on. We put on glasses. And now we're racing down the West Side Highway. Now this is only a handful of days after the buildings fell. And I remember it vividly because I remember stopping at lights and people were cheering for us because we were going down to, to the Trade Center to, to help and they were throwing water into to, 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 to the vehicle. They were throwing uh, toothbrushes and food. And we made our way all the way down through all the checkpoints. And now I am standing on the World Trade Center that had just fallen only days before, 23 years old. And we're there helping emergency workers and tradespeople move all the rubble and everything for to find survivors. And it's just, it's it's like yesterday thinking about that situation. And I remember, I remember listening to, to in the background, you know, run, 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 run. I'm like, run, 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 because the buildings were unstable down there. And while this was happening, I was just taking all this in, helping emergency workers. And what, what struck me here is, and this is what led me into what I do today in my business, is the tradespeople on site. They were there with their gas saws, with their pickaxes, with hammers and everything in between. They had no PPE on. There was no respirators on. And they were just helping the emergency workers, along with myself, find survivors. We would, you know, they, they would find something. They would call the dogs in and they would, you know, try to see if they can find somebody who, who, who was a survivor, which they did when I was there. And it was, it was an awe, ex, you know, this experience that left me after I left uh, the World Trade Center, 
And I was in a different career path at that point. I was in network administration. I was working for an IT company. And I said, I, I can't do this. This is not what I want. And I had this for the next few weeks. I was like, how can I give back to the tradespeople on site? And that's where I literally put my two weeks in. And I started my business with my brother, which is Toolfetch, the tool and equipment company. And we've been doing it ever since for almost about 22 years now. Yeah. And I, and I did um, notice that I think on your website, it said half a million products, or different types of products. I mean, how, how, what were the early days like? Because, you know, it's an online business that sells products. You see a lot of them now. But back then, what was the landscape like? It was interesting. There wasn't many companies online. It was, you think back 21 years ago, you know, today versus, you know, back then, a lot of suppliers and people that we tried to work with at first, vendors, didn't understand. What is this e-commerce thing? I don't understand. We're, we're going to ship direct for you. And it took some time for them to come around. But the landscape, there, there wasn't many companies like us online. And it just, it didn't resonate to suppliers and even customers too, because, you know, buy online with a credit card? What is, I don't understand. Yeah. So it took some time and built over trust over a course of a handful of years, to build up a customer base, to build up suppliers you know, over the years. Uh, but it took some time at first. It was, it was not accepted at first. So it was a little bit tough. It was an uphill yeah. battle. Yeah. So you're starting something new. You have, it sounds like some of the IT skills, you know, the, the partners aren't coming in, the orders aren't coming in. What are you doing? What, what sort of stress are you feeling? So I actually did, just did a video on this. My first year, I didn't make any money. Like literally, I almost quit before I even started. And that was this, you know, I just, I had this belief in myself and my brother too, at the time that we can, we can make it through this. And, you know, we were just, we were able to, you know, get momentum. It took some time, but it, we were able to get momentum. And I kind of put that behind me that, that first year, that was a learning year that was learning all the different things, you know, coming from working for somebody to, to working for yourself. It's completely different. No one can really tell you until you're actually in those shoes. <laughs> And I just, I had this burning desire to not give up and not quit. And same with my brother. And then things started to, to move and we started to pick up some more suppliers and customers and it started to snowball. And then we started to, uh, we got our first office from there. We had started basically in an apartment together, literally elbow to elbow, and then got our first office and then kind of built it up from there. And then evolution after evolution of our website that we we built out and we just kept growing the the customer base and the product line yeah absolutely and um i i guess early days how did you get your message out were they just mainly online ads like how how are you is it seo like what were some of the things that were working really well for you early on yeah, so organically, things were a little bit easier back in the day. Search engines were a little bit different than they are today. It's obviously very difficult today, and we still do SEO optimization or search engine optimization, but it was a mixture of both. It was emailing, word of mouth, SEO, um, some some advertising, but it was nowhere near where, where it is today. Um, you know, back then, there weren't as many players online as well, so that was that was helpful. But a lot of it was word of mouth. Yeah. Now, now when, when you were talking about earlier about creating content, I see you're very, very active on YouTube and LinkedIn. Are those sort of the uh, main focuses on the social media side? Yeah. I mean, for me on the personal side, it's a lot of it's LinkedIn. So, you know, I didn't start creating content really for LinkedIn. This, is, this has only been about three months of hard work. Um, and it's, it's just been absolutely amazing to connect with so many people, just, just like yourself and with, you know, with the same passion for the trades. And I just, I, I, I'm so passionate about the, the skilled trades and, and putting the message out there and just connecting with people who are coming to me and asking me, you know, 
oh, my, you know, my, uh, my son's interested in the trades, or my, my, my daughter's interested in, what, what can I do? And I'm, you know, I'm there to help, to, you know, to give them hopefully a path or at least, you know, some education about the skilled trades. And it's, again, it's just, it's just been amazing ride the last couple of months. Yeah, for sure. Like, what point, like, um, you know, when your business sort of, like you said, it built up over time, was there a point where it's sort of like, you know, you got a certain partner, you had a product line that did really well, what was kind of the inflection point where it sort of really started to, to pick up for you? I think when we started picking up more national brands, you know, like the bigger brands out there, ones you would know, Milwaukee Tools and Bosch, that was, that was a real win for us. I mean, you can't just kind of open those accounts up. That takes a lot of time and effort and investment. Once those accounts started to come on board and we were accepted in, that was sort of like we kind of got over the, the hump, the fence. I remember that. It was a, it was a couple years in, um, but that was a real, real win for us. When, when also suppliers started to come to us at that point versus yeah. the other way around. And, you know, in the beginning stages, you need to go out and you need to promote yourself and you need to speak to different people. So again, once we got that momentum, then it started to turn where they were coming to us at that point. Yeah. Now, you know, being an entrepreneur, you know, for a long time, you've seen a lot of ups and downs. But uh, people must come to you a lot for advice, you know, about starting a business and stuff like that. For me, I, I believe that entrepreneurship is not for everyone. But, you know, what are your views on that? Entrepreneurship is a very difficult path. Very difficult. And that's it's not for everybody. And not to say that people can't do it, but there is something about being an entrepreneur, about being driven and about never accepting no and believing in yourself and confidence. There is this, you know, it's it's really tough because a lot of my friends work for other people and they can't really, you know, they don't really understand about being in the shoes of being an owner and all the things that are involved, the sleepless nights, and you know, how am I going to make payroll? And you know, what if we, you know, we, we're investing in this technology that, you know, it's very expensive. We don't know what's, how it's going to pan out. All those things. It's, it isn't for everybody. And that's why, you know, they say in the first five years, good percentage, I don't know if it was 75, 80%, like a good amount of small businesses go out of business. You know, they, they just, it's not for them. They came out of a, working for another company but it was you know hard to make the transition over to a business owner and i you know i've had my ups and downs you know i've made mistakes i've cost the company a lot of money but that's just the learning experience over time but what's important if anybody you know the people that are listening thinking about starting a business have a mentor have somebody to who's been in the possibly a similar industry or understands business pretty well. I, I'm a part of a, a group called Vistage, which are executives and CEOs. And that's helped me tremendously over the last couple of years. But getting in with people who, you know, have done that journey, that's important because that can shave off a lot of years. And it's, it's, there is a fulfillment of like doing it yourself, but you also need help from people who, who know how to do certain things. You're not an expert in all these different areas because as you start to scale your own business, you know, all these challenges start to come and you hit roadblocks and you need to invest in um, more employees and other areas in, in your business. And there's a lot of things, a lot of, you know, blind sides that you just don't know or see that a mentor could really help you. Yeah, for sure. Now, I, I noticed um, on your website, you're t they were talking, uh, or you were talking about sort of distribution centers, right, and convenience. Like, what, what does your network look like? Because obviously convenience, you know, due to Amazon becomes quite a premium. So how do you address that? Yeah, so you, we want to make sure that we get the product to, to the end user. So for us, that's either having our own inventory, which we do. So we have a couple of facilities that we have that we ship direct from. Uh, we also ship direct from the manufacturer. 
We also have secondary, third, fourth sources, wholesalers, and we will do what we can to get the product into the hands of the end user. Whether that, you know, you go down the line with different sources, obviously costs are different. But at the end of the day, you want to make sure that the customer is taken care of because their jobs get held up. You know, especially with the supply chain today and everything that's going on and the delays, it costs, you know, not only that, obviously from the supplier standpoint, the manufacturers struggling in themselves getting their own product line, but also the people on site, you know, they can't get this particular uh, application done because you can't get the product, the whole, you know, the whole um, cycle is broken. So it's, it's quite challenging in that aspect. So we try to uh, partner with a lot of different sources of uh, different materials. If it's a particular item or brand that somebody wants, we offer an alternative brand, you know, something that's similar in a way. Um, yeah just you know making sure that we take care of the customer that's really what the end result is yeah absolutely now with with the um sort of um ease of access to some of these online technologies um how do you ensure that you know these major brands keep coming to you to to uh to distribute the products well we have a good working relationship with a lot of our vendors um, it's it's making sure that it's a two way street there, that they you know they come out with a new product. Obviously, as a distributor, we want to promote the product so that there's a good working relationship there. That there are check ins every quarter to make sure that products that are new that we're offering the newest products. If something is discontinued, we remove the product uh, off the site so we don't you know customer doesn't order something and it's discontinued. So it's that relationship. Uh, with the vendors is the most important piece there. Stay up to date with them. Yeah. And, and you know, with half a million products, how do, you, how do you keep track of that? What systems do you use? Yeah, so we have a, a few different back-end systems. So our, our uh, website works on NetSuite. So NetSuite's a CRM, it's ERP, it's, it's under one system. And we recently, about a year and a half ago, moved over to that fully. But that whole... Uh, behind the scenes, all is integrated properly. We have uh, inventory feeds with manufacturers, so we're in line with their inventory. Um, but all in all, it's it's a working system that it's under one roof, that it's not multiple systems like we did before, where there's one system can go down or another system can go down. It's all one system under you know, one roof, which makes it a lot easier. Yeah. For sure. Now you're talking about the, the trades, which you've been, you know, working really hard to to promote. So when people come to you and ask about information about trades, where do you typically point people? It kind of depends. You know, if somebody's interested in a trade, you know, it possibly it's a trade school. If it's uh, you know a job, I have people on LinkedIn that I've uh, over you know the last handful of months have connected with who, you know, somebody wants an HVAC uh, position or plumber, I can give them uh, a reference um, and try to seamlessly, you know, work together to uh, make the connection with the person who's asking about it to the person that offers that, that type of role. So to me, I guess in, in some sense, I'm kind of a middleman between the person who will actually place somebody to the person who's actually interested. So I try to just, you know, help people get into the right area or the right person or trade school. So that's that's how I typically um, work with different individuals. Yeah, for sure. And so for you, with what you're doing, what are you most looking forward to? In the in the skill trade business, or? personal, you know, future goals, you know, business goals, you know, anything in between. I, for me, it's just, it's the journey. You know, I love the journey. I love being an entrepreneur. I love the skilled trades. You know, I just want to make more of an impact. That's, that's really at, at the end of the day, you know, if, if I can promote the trades and a couple people say, you know what, hmm, college is not for me, but this trades thing, what's that? If I can get just a handful of people, that's a win in my book. That's sort of my goal is to is to give back uh, to to the industry that 
you know, going back to 9-11 and seeing that, that's what I always go back to. And if I can keep giving that back to individuals and make hopefully some sort of dent in the industry, that's, 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 that's a win in my book.